Hey guys, it's Charlene. Today I'm going to show you three different fun ways of how to use double-sided adhesive sheets. So these are the three cards we're going to make today. These techniques are really great if you have some of those sheets sitting around in your stash and you're not really sure what to do with them. Now I've used word dies, but you can use any kind of dies for these techniques. You can see there's my double-sided adhesive sheet. And so for the first one, I'm putting it down here on a piece of Aqua Sky cardstock right in the center. And I like to start at the bottom center, pushing it down onto the cardstock. That way I can kind of smooth out the adhesive down onto the cardstock and I don't get any ripples. Now I do recommend using a bit thicker of a double-sided adhesive sheet for these techniques. I think the one from scrapbook.com works really well. Once I have it all down, I'm gonna come in here with my bone folder and I'm gonna really, really push down that adhesive because I wanna make sure it's nice and stuck to the card and that it's all nice and flat underneath there. Once I get it all pushed down, I can go ahead and come in with my pokey tool and just remove that top release layer from the double-sided adhesive. And this is something you want to do nice and slow. Same when you're taking the backing off of it. You just want to take your time because you don't want to rip your adhesive sheet and then have to go through the whole process all over again. Once I get it all off of there, this first technique involves dun 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 glitter. I know it's, it's such a divisive subject, but if you have some nice fine glitter in your stash, or even if you have some of like the rock candy glitter from Tim Holtz, this is a fun way to use it. Now I'm just going to sprinkle the glitter over the top. I'm not going to put too, too much down on there. I am using some white iridescent glitter. You're going to see, I end up later changing this up, but for this process, what I've recorded is with this specific glitter. And you could do this with a piece of wax paper or another piece of scratch paper. I'm doing it here with my bone folder, but what I'm doing is I'm working that glitter down into the adhesive. I wanna really get it nice and stuck on there. So a lot of people like to do this with wax paper and actually it's probably less messy if you use wax paper, but all I did when I was finished was tap off my bone folder and then just wipe it off and it got the excess glitter off of there. So now you can tap off your cardstock and you might even want to do this over a container that holds your glitter. I know some people keep their glitter in like a Ziploc plastic container, so that's something you could do as well. Once you get all of the excess glitter off, I like to do one final sweep and just this is just to get any of those last few bits of stray glitter off of there. And I have a sweep brush for this. I love this brush. I'm going to use it a couple of times throughout this tutorial. I use it all of the time. I use it to sweep excess things off of my cardstock. I use it to sweep off my desk. It's just a really nice soft bristled brush and it's very wide so it works really well. So for my first stamp set I'm using today, I'm using the So Very Mice stamps and dies. These are really cute. I am not actually a sewer. I mean I have a sewing machine but I don't really use it very often unless I have to. Uh, but I love the idea of sewing and I have lots of friends who enjoy it. So I thought this would be a really cute set to keep around so that way I could make cards for other people that enjoy that. And come on, these little critters from Lawn Fun, they're just adorable. So I've stamped out several of the little mice as well as several of the different sewing and embroidery elements. And now I'm coming in and coloring everything. For the mice, I use some warm grays. I use W0, W1, W2, and W5. And then for the pinks and the ears, I used R00 and R20. And then I used R20 for their noses as well. I used RV21 and RV23 for the dress as well as the thread spool. And then for the blues, the bow tie and the button, I used BG01 and BG05. The ribbon, I used BG13 and BG49. And then for the scissors and thimble, I use C2 and C3. I find those cool grays make a really nice metal look. 
and for the embroidery hoop I used E33 and then I used some C0 for shading on the fabric. Now I'm using Copic colors here you can see but you can use any kind of color medium that you would like. You can use watercolors, you can use colored pencils, whatever you have. Just keep in mind that the type of ink you stamp with is going to make a difference in what you can color with. So any water-based dye ink is going to allow you to use any kind of alcohol-based medium. So you can use Copic markers, Spectrum Noir markers, Gamsol with colored pencils, anything like that versus you want to use a hybrid or a pigment ink if you're going to be watercoloring. Now something that's really cute about this set is it does come with these little stitched images and you can stamp them in various areas of the card and I decided to stamp one onto the embroidery hoop so I thought that was very cute. I used some peacock feathers distress ink for that. So here you can see that was the first one I did. I did off camera decide to do one with silver glitter because I wanted it to pop off the card some more. So that's the one I'm actually going to use to put together the card. I used the Gina K Master Layouts 1 in order to cut out the aqua sky panel as well as my black matting layer. I use these all the time because it helps to create that really nice thin border around the edges. The size of the smaller rectangle is three and three quarter inches by five inches. And then the size of the slightly larger rectangle is three and seven eighths inches by five and one eighth inch. So you can certainly cut that out with a paper trimmer as well. And sometimes I do, but if I'm going to be cutting a lot of different panels, which I was doing for these cards, I like to use the master layouts. It just makes it so easy and I don't have to worry about cutting my paper incorrectly, which I am known to do. So one thing I really like about the giant word dice from Lawn Fun is they make it really easy to put together a card. Now, everything you've seen in this video today, I purchased myself. Sometimes I am gifted products from companies, but all of these are my own purchases or they were given to me by a friend. So I am popping up all of those tiny little elements and what I was trying to say is that the large word dice are so easy to put together cards because really all you have to do is put them on the card and then put a bunch of little images around it and it creates the perfect card. Very simple, works really well with any lawn fawn or small critter sets. I think they're great. So I'm stamping my sentiment on the inside. It says, you are so amazing. And then I also stamped the little needle and thread. So here is the finished first card. I love that glitter on there. It does shed just a little bit, but not terrible because it's really worked into that double-sided adhesive. So for our second card here, I'm using the Happy Birthday Giant Word Die. Same thing, I've taken off the release tape and now I'm starting from the bottom center and then just slowly working my way up so that I can ensure I don't get any wrinkles in the adhesive. Once I get it all on there, again, going to come in with my bone folder and I'm really going to work everything in and push it all down because I want to make sure that this adhesive stays on there and doesn't come up anywhere. I've got my rabbit hole designs anti-static powder tool here. I love this thing and I'm just making sure to go all the way around all of that adhesive before I pull off the top release tape and you guessed it, we are going to heat emboss. Now I'm doing this with a word dye, but like I said, you could do this with any style of dye. And in fact, this is something I like to do during the holidays. I like to die cut snowflakes and then use embossing powder over the double-sided adhesive. I feel like it helps me get more out of my die cuts. 
Now, of course, you could use embossing ink and you could smoosh your embossing ink pad all over the top of a die cut and then do this, but I find this to be much easier to do with the double-sided adhesive and I find that it gives me a better result too. So you can try it either way, whatever you have, you can make it work for this technique. So I'm using some Simon Says Stamp Antique Gold Embossing Powder. This is my favorite gold embossing powder. You guys have seen it a million times, but I'm just tapping off any excess. And then if I have any little stray bits, I'm using a little flathead brush just to sweep those away. But you can see there aren't many. Now I've got my heat gun. I'm gonna melt all of that gorgeous embossing powder. This is an ultra fine embossing powder and this might actually work better with a thick or an ultra thick embossing powder because then you're going to have more of those little plastic granules on your paper to melt. So you're going to see that my finished product once this is all melted has kind of a distressed look to it and that's why it's because I used an ultra fine embossing powder and I like it I like that look I think it looks like kind of gilded like a hammered gilded gold so I think it looks really nice Next, I've got the Simply Celebrate stamps and dies from Lawn Fawn, and I'm going to be using the balloons, the stars, and the candles. Now, this is an older set, and it's not available everywhere, um, but I will link down below in the description to everything that I'm using today, so if you're curious to see about a product that I'm using, you can find all of the details down there. I am using Distress Ink and Black Soot to stamp out all of my images today and I feel like Distress Ink doesn't get enough play in terms of alcohol marker coloring. All of the Distress Inks are water-based dye inks so all of them work well for Copic coloring. So you could stamp them out in any color of Distress Ink and then Copic color. Just keep that in mind if you're looking around and you're thinking, oh, I wanna do something a little different. Something fun you could do would be to stamp all of your stamps in pink or maybe in blue and then color them in. That's gonna give you a different fun look from the kind of standard black outline look that um, everyone uses. So for my pinks on all of these, I am using some RV02 and RV04, very vibrant pinks. And for red, I'm using R14 and R17. For the oranges, I have YR04 and YR07. For the yellows, Y02 and Y06. For the greens, YG03 and YG06. For the blues, B02 and BG05, and for the purple, V15 and V17. So I'm just doing a repeating pattern. Some of these, the stars, it's just all of one color. Um, the pink, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Got a rainbow theme going on there. The balloons, there's a few more balloons than there are stars, as well as the candles. So I'm just repeating the pattern on those ones. Once I had everything colored in, I came back in with some Y21 and YR23 to do the flames on all of those candles. I pulled out a piece of dark blue cardstock from my stash. I think this is from My Favorite Things, and I cut it down to four and a quarter by five and a half because it's going to take up the whole background. And then I cut my center panel with the happy birthday we did earlier. I cut that down using the smaller of the two master layout rectangles. So it's three and three quarter inches by five inches. And I put some double-sided foam adhesive strips on the back there. And you can see I just folded down the top quarter or the top third of those strips and that allows me to get it nice and centered and I can push down then on the top part where I've folded down the strips and then I can just kind of bend the top back and pull off the remainder of the release tape and it lays down perfectly flat right where I had it before and then everything is nice and centered. 
So this card has a little bit more dimension than the first one because I did pop up the center panel there and I'm also popping up all of the little elements. Off camera, I did decide to stamp out the year three stamps and that's where the birthday cake and the little cake slice come from. And I colored those in some similar colors, the cake icing, I used RV02 and RV04. For the slice, I use B02 and BG05, and then I just shaded a little bit with some cool grays. So now you guys are about to see my boo-boo here. So the whole card is finished. It looks so lovely. You open it up and oops, <laughs> I put it in the wrong way on the inside, but that's okay. It's still adorable. So for our third card, I'm again coming in here with my double-sided adhesive. For this one, I used the Hooray Giant Word Die. This is a fun word die because you can use it for birthdays or celebrations or pretty much anything that you're happy about. The other difference you've probably noticed is the first two I used white cardstock and for this one I'm using some black cardstock and that's because the technique we're doing with the double-sided adhesive for this card works really well in particular on dark colored cardstock. So you could use black, you could use colors, you could use craft, anything that has some darkness to it, this is going to work really well. Again, making sure that that double-sided adhesive is pushed down really well. This is definitely an important step, so don't skip it. And now I can remove all of the release paper and we're going to use an oldie but a goodie. We're going to use some perfect pearls. And you can see I have the color blush there on my desk. And we are going to put this right over the double-sided adhesive. Now, if you've never worked with Perfect Pearls before, they are essentially a shimmer powder, but they have a binder that's in the powder that once it is wet, it binds everything and it makes it so that it doesn't shed at all. Now, I'm not actually going to use any water on this card, and that's because I'm using the double-sided adhesive, and I find that it is sticky enough to hold everything and I don't actually need to spritz this with water once I'm done but if you were using embossing ink for instance and you stamped something or you stenciled something with embossing ink and then you put the perfect pearls over it once you're done in that case you do want to mist it with some water so all I did was put the perfect pearls down and then I used a stiff bristle brush to work it into that double-sided adhesive making sure to get it really nice and covered in hindsight I probably dumped too much of the perfect pearls onto my paper so it took me a little while to get all of the excess off but you can see here once I got most of the excess off using that stiff bristle brush and it comes with some of the packs of the perfect pearls I did then come in with my sweet brush. It just works so well to get any of that excess powder off. That brush also works really well if you heat emboss on black cardstock and you need to remove your excess anti-static powder off of your cardstock. The sweet brush works great for that. So you can see there's a couple of spots around on the card where some little excess bits of adhesive were so the perfect pearl stuck to it all i did was come in with my adhesive eraser and erase those and you couldn't even tell for my stamp set i'm using elfie selfie so cute i love elephants and so i'm going to stamp these out again with some distress ink and color them with copic colors for the elephant i'm using w0 w2 W5 and then a tiny bit of W7 on his little tail poof at the end there. And for the bird, I'm using Y02 and Y35. And for the beak on the bird, I'm using YR04. For the flag, I'm using B02 and BG05. 
for the little flower, I'm using R20 and R22 and Y06. Now you can see I have one heart stamped that has the center open. I did go back off camera and stamp two more of those. So that way I could have a pink, a yellow, and a blue heart. For the pink, I used R20 and R22. For the yellow, Y02 and Y35. And for the blue, B02 and BG05. Okay, so you can see I cut down my cardstock. I'm not sure exactly how large I cut that down to, but I made it so that it covered about the right two thirds of an A2 size card. And that's just a fun way to do landscape cards. You can have a color block on one side and then white on the other, and it makes it kind of just look interesting, I think. So I cut out the congratulations sentiment and that is from that Elfie selfie stamp set and I just cut that out using a little rectangle die I had in my stash and I am popping up everything again with some double sided foam adhesive but there's not too much dimension to this card because only the little elements are getting popped up with that foam adhesive. So you can see I got my cute little elephant holding his flag. I've got the bird there holding the flower. And when I'm putting down elements, I do try to make it so that they're kind of interacting with that giant word die. So there's the finished card there. You can really see that shine. I'm very happy with how that came out. So just to remind you, here's those three ways. Again, you can use double-sided adhesive sheets with glitter. You can use them with embossing powder, and you also can use them with perfect pearls. All right, guys, I hope you picked up some tips and tricks today. If you have questions about anything, be sure to check the description or leave a comment below for me. Please be sure to like and subscribe as well as hit that notification bell so that I can continue bringing you more crafty content in the future. Until next time, happy crafting.